Juan Sanchez Cotan's quince, cabbage, melon, and cucumber, painted around 1600 or 1602, is one of the great still lifes, not only in Spanish art, but really in the European tradition more generally. As with all still life painting, part of the game is naturalism, trying to trick the eye, trying to make the most naturalistic rendition possible of the objects in the painting. But part of it too is mastering observed reality so that, for example, you have not just a beautifully painted melon, but one in which the seeds actually slide away from the center on the juice, or here, this little slice where someone has begun to peel the wedge of melon, transforming it, in a sense, from something merely to be seen and making it instead something much more real as something to be eaten. Much of the power in the painting comes, though, with what is not everyday reality. For one, that we find these fruits and vegetables hanging on strings, rather unexpectedly, framed in this great window, and also the great negative space in the background of the picture. They also hang not just in an ordinary way, but in this perfect curve, something that's been described as a parabolic or a catenary curve. There's no real evidence that Sanchez Cotan measured out the curve. It's something more instinctual. But in that combination of objects and composition uh, and the mystery, this is a kind of painting that even those not interested in old master painting can appreciate. It appeals to lovers of modern art as well, partly because of that great composition. What Sanchez Cotan seems to be doing is taking up a rather old challenge in painting, to try to make something that's so real that, to quote a famous story from the antiquity, you might actually fool the birds into landing on this windowsill and trying to eat the fruits and vegetables there. But there's something more to the painting, uh, which we get when we look into the biographical angle. Sanchez Cotan had been a relatively successful painter in the city of Toledo. He was associated with El Greco, for example. El Greco even seems to have owed him a great deal of money. Yet suddenly, in 1603, Sanchez Cotan gave up all of his possessions, leaving behind the contents of his studio, including this painting, which is registered in that inventory, renouncing his possessions and moving instead into a Carthusian monastery further south in Granada. When we know this information, it's tempted some people to make the case that this is not simply a matter of observed reality or a painter playing a game of competition against the traditions of the ancients. But instead, it might be an attempt to show, even in the simplest objects, the glory of God's creation. That if a humble quince and cabbage can be so transformed by this painting, so too we should rejoice in all of God's creation. It's hard to make the case definitively one way or another, but it's in those spatial and contextual ambiguities that the picture has much of its lasting charm.